Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Ryan. Today we're going to be reading Coretta Scott King Award winner, The Book Itch, Freedom, Truth, and Harlem's Greatest Bookstore, by Vonda Michelle Nelson with illustrations by R. Gregory Christie. This story takes place in a little community in North Manhattan called Harlem. Harlem is a very important area because it's historically been intertwined with black culture in America including the production of jazz music, poetry, and of course, literature. I think you guys are really going to enjoy learning about this bookstore, as I sure have. Let's hop on in, shall we? This house is packed with all the facts about all the blacks all over the world. That's what it says above our door. We own this place, this house, the National Memorial African Bookstore. It's our home, just about, because we spend so much time here. On weekends and in the summer, I ride my bike to the store and help Dad. I get to carry the signs out in the morning and put flags of African countries and holders near the curb. All kinds of people come to 2107 South, 2107 7th Avenue. Kids and grown-ups, black folks and white folks. Writers and politicians, artists and teachers, even famous people like actors and musicians from the Apollo Theater visit the bookstore. Sometimes it's so busy you can hardly get inside. One day, a crowd bigger than usual is packed around the door. I squeeze through and put my bike up. This is my boy, Louie, Dad says. I look up. It's... It's Muhammad Ali! He's so tall, I have to lean my head way back to see his face. I feel his big boxer's fingers close over mine. It's like shaking hands with a giant. I can't think of anything to say. Mr. Ali pushes my chin up. I guess my mouth was hanging wide open. He and Dad are laughing at me, but I don't care. I just met the heavyweight champion of the world. Dad opened his store in Harlem Square way before I was born. Mom says he started out with five books, five books and a mission. She says he had something in his heart he believed in so much that he'd do just about anything to make it happen. Dad says he got the book itch and needed to scratch it. Back then, he'd walk up 7th Avenue and onto 125th Street selling books out of a push cart. Don't get took! Read a book, he'd call. When Dad went to a bank to borrow money to open a bookstore for black people, the banker said no. He said Dad could have a loan to sell fish and chips or fried chicken, but not books. The banker told him, black people don't read. My dad believed they would. He washed windows, saved his pennies, and opened the bookstore. He was right. People came, and they read. Now we have about a zillion books in the store, and more people come every day. They come and they talk, they read, and they buy. Dad doesn't have to sell on the street now, but sometimes we do anyway. Dad says he wants to reach people who might not know about the store, people who don't know how important books are. We pushed the cart calling, knowledge is power, you need it every hour, read a book. Dad made that up just like he made up the sign over the store. He plays with words until they say what he feels. I guess that makes him a poet. Dad's name is the same as mine, Louis Michel, but people call him the professor, even though he didn't go to school much. Dad says he doesn't have college knowledge. He educated himself by reading books and by living. He says, you are not necessarily a fool because you didn't go to school. Can I stay home and read books and learn by living, I ask? You go on to school, Dad says. There are things you can learn from your teachers, but don't you stop thinking for yourself. And don't you stop asking questions. Me and my dad talk about important things, things like truth and what it means to be free. Dad says books can help you. 
Not every book is true, he says, but the more you read, the easier it is to figure out for yourself what is true. Dad lets people read books without buying them. There's a boy who reads in the store every Saturday like it's a library. Dad says, books will help him clear the weeds and plant the seeds so he'll succeed. Like I said, Dad's a poet. Customers stay as long as they want, even if it's past closing time. Dad never makes them leave like other stores do. Sometimes Dad locks up so late he's too tired to come home. He sleeps there with all his books. I don't always understand his poetry, but I like the sound of Dad's words. He calls the bookstore the house of common sense and the home of proper propaganda. Mom says that means the bookstore is a place to find good information and ideas. People come for more than books. They come to talk and to listen. When me and Dad set up the raised platform outside the store, people crowd around. They know there's going to be a rally. News spreads fast. Some people find out from flyers. Most folks hear through the grapevine. I like to stand on the platform and look out. People, people everywhere. There are some squad cars too, Dad jokes. Anytime more than three black people congregate, the police get nervous. People come to hear talk about fighting for the same rights white people have, talk about jobs and voting, about how black folks should respect and support each other. People shout angry words. They kid around and laugh. Sometimes I don't get why they're mad or what's so funny. Dad talks to the crowd from the platform too. He says black people need to learn their history by reading books. If you don't know and you ain't got no dough, then you can't go, and that's for show. The days Mr. Malcolm X speaks, lots of people come. When we first met, Mr. Malcolm shook my hand and gave me the kindest smile. He and my dad are friends. Mr. Malcolm even gets mail at the store. He loves books as much as we do. He says he could spend the rest of his life reading just to satisfy his curiosity. When Mr. Malcolm comes to the store, he sits in the back room and talks with Dad about what he's going to say before climbing onto the platform. The crowd claps and cheers so much, Mr. Malcolm has to wait a long time for them to get quiet before he can say anything. Then when he does, they get riled up all over again. I remember one time he said, nobody can give you freedom. Nobody can give you equality or justice or anything. If you're a man, you take it. That really got them going. There are bodyguards watching out for Mr. Malcolm. When I ask Dad why, he says, Malcolm speaks the truth, and there are people who don't want us to hear it. One cold day, I'm down at Rockefeller Center ice skating with my friends. When Dad comes for me, he says, Hurry now, I have to get up to the Audubon Ballroom. Malcolm's expecting me. I jump in the car, and Dad takes me home. Then he speeds off toward the ballroom. While I'm doing my homework, Mom gets a phone call. She covers her face and turns away. Mom hangs up and looks at me. Malcolm! Her eyes are wet. She can't talk for a minute. Someone shot him when he stood up to give his speech. I can't breathe. Mom opens her arms. I run to her. Don't worry, she says. Your father is coming home. In, out. I am breathing again. Later, I hear Dad's key in the door. He hugs Mom and me and, says into his and sags into his chair. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. At last, he says, when I got to the ballroom, everybody was rushing out, screaming and hollering. I went inside and there he was, lying dead. Dad kind of shivers. I was supposed to be sitting right beside him. I'm glad he wasn't. I'm sad they killed Mr. Malcolm, but I'm glad my dad is all right. I'm glad I went skating and dad came to get me. I'm glad. After I go to bed, dad sits in the living room, crying in the dark. I never heard dad cry before, and I don't know what to do. I can't keep from crying too. In the morning, Dad comes to my room. 
He looks tired, but okay. He sits on the edge of my bed and pets my forehead. Malcolm used to say, if you're not willing to die for it, put the word freedom out of your vocabulary, Dad said. They think they got rid of him, but people won't forget, Louie. His words will never leave us. Words. That's why people need our bookstore. Maybe someday I'll believe in something so much I'll have the itch to make it happen. For now, I read books, I ask questions, I listen to the people on the platform outside, and I talk with my dad about truth. Here at the National Memorial African Bookstore. Thank you guys so much for reading along with me. This was a very powerful, very moving story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please feel free to learn about the biography of Mr. Lewis Henry Michaud, a great mover and shaker in the early days of the black literature circulation and the civil rights movement. Thank you all very much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun reading this story for you. Please feel free to check out my other stories on this channel if you're, or if you're looking for fun activities you can do from home. Go ahead and check out veronolibrary.org slash children. Until next time, I'll be seeing you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.